Thanks very much, Greg. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us here this morning um, at the 2018 State of the City Economy Conference. This is actually a coming of age year for this event. And it was first staged in 1997, 21 years ago. And Glasgow then, of course, was emerging from a turbulent chapter in our history. The post-war years had consigned to the past uh, our proud and global reputation for heavy industry. And we know the story that followed. Deindustrialisation combined with urban depopulation left deep and toxic scars to fester on the city's landscape and generational unemployment, detachment and despair to take hold in the communities that were left behind. But even in its darkest days, Glasgow could always muster and display a remarkable capacity for resilience. And from the green shoots of 1998's Garden Festival, the Year of Culture two years later, and the Year of Architecture and Design later in the 90s, these were milestones on a path to the recovery where we find ourselves today. A Glasgow with a vibrant, diverse, growing and international city economy, a world leader in key sectors like life sciences, quantum and space technology, creative industries, to name just a few, and a global reputation for hosting international sporting and cultural events. And when I stood la here last year, I spoke of the city's need to be Brexit ready. And incredibly, with just over 100 days to go, as our poll just showed us, uh, we don't know exactly what it is we need to be ready for. But we do know that it's crucial that Glasgow is able to rise above the oncoming shocks and that we remain in control of resilience and growth, able to promote levels of innovation, investment, fair work and skills for all of our citizens, enabling and working in collaboration to secure our collective aims. Now that's all easier said than done um, and there aren't signs right now of the UK government making it any easier for us. But at last year's event I announced my intention to commission a report into the potential impact of Brexit on the city economy and later in today's programme Professor Graham Roy of the Fraser of Allender Institute will speak in more detail about the findings. But if I were to pick one headline out of that report it is that the city economy will face significant headwinds for the long term because of Brexit. And I meet uh, regularly with businesses large and small and what I hear from them time and again is deep concern about the impact Brexit in any form, but especially in a form that takes us out of the single market and customs union, will have on a city economy that has not only recovered from, but in so many ways transcended the ravages of the past. Does Brexit risk us losing so much of the progress that Glasgow has made? As the clock ticks down to March, real businesses, real employers, real workers and real public service providers like Glasgow City Council are still in limbo. But for us in the council, wait and see could never be an option. And so the city has acted where we were able to. And this year, the council and the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce jointly commissioned today's chair, uh, Professor Greg Clark, to assess Glasgow's business performance, assets and climate in relation to our UK, European and global competitor cities. And those of you who have been regular tenders um, at the State of the City Economy Conference may be surprised to know that Greg doesn't just sit around waiting all year for the invitation to come back and chair. He does have a day job and is one of the world's leading urbanists um, and an advisor to cities globally. So he was the perfect person for us to choose to deliver that report. And the headline figures are encouraging. Our overall visibility is improving and our position across all global city metrics has improved by 21% since 2015. Among all medium-sized peer cities, Glasgow currently ranks 32nd for overall performance. And this complements the great strides that we know we've made in the last year alone. Our economy grew by 4.4%. Unemployment is at the, in the city is at lowest levels since records began. 
We've met our target of increasing the business base five years ahead of schedule, and the number of people with degree level qualifications continues to hugely outperform comparator cities such as Manchester, Birmingham and Liverpool. Greg's findings point to a rejuvenated financial sector, a large professional, professional and skilled talent base, supported by a university and college sector which both attract and retains that talent. We are globally connected, we have a reputation in tourism and hospitality excellence and a dynamic and resilient retail market. We are affordable giving us a real appeal among millennials and are, this might be my favourite bit, we are apparently the 12th most hipster city in Europe. Um, and if you, if you want to know how they measure that, they do measure it. They actually count things like um, vegan restaurants, uh, coffee shops, tattoo parlours, um, men with complicated beards. Um, I, I might have made that last one up. Um, we know that we have a passion and commitment within our creative industries, which is one of those factors in that um, hipster index. Um, there are traits that are also found in the city as a whole, as are um, that sector's capacity for attracting ideas and talent. And ONS figures show that we have over 21,000 jobs and 2,500 individual enterprises within Glasgow's creative industries. And in 2016, they generated almost £900 million. Uh, that's over a fifth of the total produced by the sector nationally in Scotland. Our recent European Championships, of course, which we co-hosted with Berlin, saw a staggering 280 million viewers tune in to see everything our city does at its absolute best. And just last night, the Eurochamps were awarded uh, the event of the year at the Scottish Sports Awards, and rightly so. So from sport, arts, culture and nightlife to the unique character of our citizens, the world knows that something's happening in Glasgow. But equally, Professor Clark's report is clear-eyed and it is sober. It doesn't shy away from the persistent challenges that we face around productivity growth and around the numbers of unskilled and underqualified residents we have in the city. And it states that we continue to struggle to tell the story of our business brand in Glasgow, to tell the story in the world about our dynamic economy and our record of innovation. It also acknowledges the constraints resulting from our lack of public transport connectivity relative to our peer cities. Um, and as a result of that, we now sit within the top third most congested medium-sized developed cities. The Council and the Chamber together commissioned the report to provide us with a clear idea of what our challenges are and to know what the rest of the world thinks about us. It is an enormously stimulating and thought-provoking read and will, I believe, be a catalyst for helping us to take Glasgow's economy to the next stage. And the report identifies that stage as the fourth cycle in our economic progress, focusing on competitiveness, innovation, and growth. We want to protect and enhance Glasgow's reputation, of course we do, but if we simply brush the more challenging findings in the report under the carpet, we will fail to move forward. To confront and overcome our challenges, we need to identify them and to understand them. We need to know the story that we want to tell, create the space that we need to shape and write that story, and then tell it together, loudly and often. So I'm announcing today that we at the Council and the Chamber, along with our colleagues at Glasgow Airport this time, are commissioning Professor Clark to follow up on this initial report. And he'll bring together Team Glasgow to help us write our story. Together we'll develop a fresh shared narrative, highlighting those areas of strength that aren't yet filtering through to the wider world. We can demonstrate progress, we can show investors, businesses, that if they come to Glasgow, not only will they see our challenges being addressed in real time, they'll also see a brand and a reputation for opportunity that is unrivaled in these islands. As you'd expect, I also want to talk through some of the successes of the past year, but particularly to emphasise the extent to which those have been delivered in partnership and collaboration. 
For the City Council and the Glasgow City Government, partnership working is no longer simply rhetoric or borne out of legislative or public sector necessity. This is just how we work now. It's the new Glasgow way. I see the Council's central role as a facilitator and enabler for growing our city economy, ensuring that our partners from across all sectors are supported and empowered to deliver outcomes that make our city better for all of our people and for all of you to do your business successfully. Utilising the expertise of the people in this room and in our communities is crucial to the success of the city because it brings a breadth and depth of insight that simply can't be replicated by the council acting alone. Perhaps the most high profile example of this new way of working was our successful bid for a Channel 4 hub. And Channel 4's choice of Glasgow as one of their new locations does so much more than bring 50 high-end jobs to the city. Extremely welcome though that is. It brings here key decision makers from a broadcaster with global pro profile and presence and significant spending power and it cements our reputation as a city of rich cultural and creative diversity. But what was particularly striking about the way we did the bid, in the words of our inimitable uh, bid chair, Stuart Cosgrove, was that it was the polar opposite of the corporate portfolio. It was led by those who know the sector best and supported by the logistical and technical support that the council provides and provides very well, I have to say. In a similar vein, taking a lead from some European competitor cities, over the past year, the Glasgow Nighttime Economy Commission has brought together industry leaders who enthusiastically volunteered their time and expertise and has been co-chaired by myself and Jeff Ellis, uh, one of the prime movers and influ influencers in Glasgow and Scotland's music scene, of course. Our nighttime economy is worth over £2 billion to the city economy and provides over 16,000 full-time jobs. It is not just a massive motor for the city's economic well-being, of course. It is part of what makes Glasgow Glasgow, part of what makes us who we are. But the city has sometimes had a fraught relationship uh, with its clubs and its music venues. Um, and that's why we established the commission. And we intend to make public recommendations early in the new year to ensure that we not only maintain our reputation as a city where you have a great night out, but we enhance it. Our newly published digital strategy, which is on your chairs, uh, fresh off the presses, um, was also developed in collaboration with industry and academic experts. And it makes a step change in our digital connectivity that is essential for our inclusive economic growth. For too long in Glasgow, the not spots of poor internet connectivity have directly correlated with areas of deprivation in the city, and that is not good enough. The digital strategy seeks partnerships with the private sector to install the infrastructure that we need for comprehensive fibre broadband coverage across the whole city and 5G capability. It includes a £30 million investment from City Fibre, the largest core infrastructure investment from them in the UK so far. Other digital partnerships are at an advanced stage of development and we'll be able to report on those very soon. Our social enterprise strategy, another first for the city, uh, was published earlier this year and it was co-produced with that rapidly growing sector of our economy and will help to support and sustain its continued growth and the impact it has in our communities. Early in the new year, we will sign a memorandum of understanding with every single one of the city's academic institutions, universities, arts institutions, colleges and the Open University. We'll create a framework for the higher and further education sectors and the city government to work together to enhance and enrich our policy making process. It will create a partnership of real depth between town and gown in Glasgow. And I believe it will be the first of its kind, certainly the first of that extent in the UK. 
Our Glasgow Economic Leadership Board, the GEL Board, continues to advise the city um, and to refresh and grow in the past year. And I'm delighted that a new Creative Industries Hub, chaired by Professor Janice Kirkpatrick, has also been added to GEL's key sector works. And Janice is on the panel later, so you'll hear more from her directly about the impact that she plans to have. But early areas of focus will be around shaping the Made in Glasgow programme and ensuring that our creative and cultural industries reach into every single neighbourhood of our city. And we'll be announcing more about our plans on that front before Christmas. And returning to the digital sector, Neil Logan, the CEO of Incremental Group, has also joined the GEL board this year to help us fill another gap in representation of key economic sectors in the city. And last year, I promised we would establish the Glasgow Partnership for Economic Growth, GPEG, to oversee the implementation of our economic strategy. If there's one thing we do well in Glasgow, it's acronyms, I have to say. I'm delighted to say that the main GPEG board and the hubs have convened and we've received a tremendous commitment and contribution from our partners in the public, private, third and academic sectors. Again, their enthusiasm, their energy has been inspiring. Um, over the next few months, the hubs will consider the actions in the economic strategy and how their respective organisations can contribute to their implementation. The hubs have been designed as the delivery mechanisms for our collaborative work across the city economy, focusing on innovation, on skills and employability, and on support for businesses. And as Greg's report confirms, our lack of transport connectivity in parts of the city is a barrier to economic progress and one which the city government is determined to overcome. And the Connectivity Commission, uh, which I announced at last year's State of the City, uh, published its report last week. And it too makes compelling reading. It is visionary and transformative and crucially it is deliverable if we are prepared to make the bold choices in the years ahead. And we do need to grasp the nettle to reduce the amount of road space we give over to cars and to continue to invest in safer bicycle lanes, better pavements and increased pedestrianisation. And all the evidence shows that doing this will make our city more competitive economically, better for people to live and work and visit. So our city centre experience matches our, our aspirations for our city. More of our citizens rely on bus than any other mode of transport, and buses are long overdue a sharper policy focus, um, as the Connectivity Commission advised and, and confirmed for us. Improved bus services are absolutely critical to addressing the economic, social and civic exclusion felt by too many of our citizens. So that's why the City Council and our major bus companies have signed up to a new Glasgow Bus Partnership. The Council will install bus priority measures to improve journey times. In return, the industry will deliver better services, fares and routes. We share a determination to better connect our citizens and communities and to reverse the precipitous decline in bus patronage that we've seen in Glasgow in recent years. The Glasgow City Region deal is one of the most advanced in the UK and we are now delivering the projects in that deal at pace. Every penny of the deal is already committed towards an overall programme of work which we continue to rigorously test to ensure that it provides the best inclusive economic value. Communities across this city and across the region are now seeing this investment in the ground and there is a real visibility around the city deal projects. Site Hill, for example, one of the most significant regeneration projects in Europe, will see hundreds of new homes completed by the end of next year, while the area's new park, which will be a real visitor destination, will be ready by next summer. And the Site Hill Bridge over the M8 has in the past week had its planning application submitted and that will connect a too long neglected community uh, with back to the city centre, bridging physical barriers between people and place. City deal investments also visible along the Clyde. £50 million is going to be spent over the next five years to shore up the city's key walls. 
Ground investigation works for the Govan Partick Bridge are on site as we speak. Sucky Hall Street headed the queue as the first to benefit from the city deal funded avenues project and £7.2 million has been invested to improve connectivity and Sucky Hall Street's overall look and feel. Of course, when that investment was announced, no one could have anticipated the additional challenges that the street would face this year. The impact on the lives of displaced residents and business owners following the fires at Victoria's nightclub and the Macintosh School of Art um, has undoubtedly been difficult um, and we can't underestimate that. 198 businesses, both inside and outside the cordon, have been supported by the Fire Recovery Fund and residents were also supported through the Lord Provost Fund. And at this juncture, I'd like to take an opportunity to pay particular thanks to the City Council's business support team on the ground. They were on the ground within days of the um, Macintosh fire taking place. Um, and their tireless efforts to support an understandably traumatised business community have, I think, made a real difference. Um, so Dominic Dowling, Graham Smith, Karen Fotheringham, Jim Mirren and Irene Holding have my particular thanks. However, the adversity that Sucky Hall Street has faced has also given us an opportunity to reimagine Sucky Hall Street as a model of a 21st century high street. Our city centre residential strategy, which will be complete by the middle of next year, will provide the foundations to get families and services back into our city centre. We'll need to be bold with our limited powers, such as compulsory purchase orders. And there needs to be an honesty about the expectations that we have of partners, including both governments, artistic and academic institutions, and local businesses, all of whom have a stake in the street's success. The innovation and entrepreneurialism of our city's businesses and people are assets that we are determined to harness and grow in Sucky Hall Street and right across the city. Innovation districts provide startups with the support to bolster resilience and resistance to key risks at a critical point in their life cycle. And the Glasgow City region will play host to Scotland's first three innovation, dis innovation districts, with the first officially launched in the early part of 2019. An incredibly exciting development for the city region. Um, watch this space, um, I would say, about our innovation districts. New business support initiatives from the Council, including our Space for Growth Plan and the Community Business Boost Programme, encourage start-up activity in the most disadvantaged parts of our city, city through support and, and subsidy for rents and rates. Repurposing the Council's own property will be a major focus in the coming year um, and beyond. We need to maximise our assets and be brave enough to pass on those that we are not making best use of just now, but which others, including community groups and local businesses, could make much better use of. Our Meanwhile Space initiative, for example, focusing initially on the high street and the salt market, brings vacant shop fronts into productive use as incubation space for creative and design startups, and also brings fresh life back to a long neglected area of the city, which will now be supported by a long overdue comprehensive high street area strategy. Circular Glasgow, a partnership between the Council and the Chamber of Commerce was just this week shortlisted for a World Economic Forum Award. We are shortlisted alongside the governments of Denmark, the Netherlands, the European Commission, the City of Toronto and the Chinese province of Shandong. Um, so it's a fantastic achievement for the city, an area we want to do much, much more on in the coming year. The potential return for Glasgow and for Scotland if we embrace the circular economy runs into billions of pounds and Glasgow is at the forefront of this revolution. Our city has seen a return to population growth again after many decades of decline. And the task in front of us, particularly as a city council, but also businesses, colleges, partners, is to ensure as many of those citizens as possible are economically active. We have been developing, again, with the collaborative support of an outside expert group, 
and will bring forward early next year our inclusive city strategy, which will focus not just on support for Glasgow's refugee and migrant population to take advantage of employment opportunities, but also on encouraging employers to stop overlooking this valuable pool of skills and talent. Our economy needs skilled workers. Our migrant and refugee population provides them. It's that simple. And we'll continue to challenge the Home Office's absurd ban on asylum seekers earning a living. With ongoing shortages in several key sectors, the UK government's continuing exclusion of often highly skilled asylum seekers from the workplace makes no sense for anyone. There are 4,500 asylum seekers living in Glasgow just now, and many of those people could be making a contribution which would benefit the city, the city economy, and most importantly, themselves and their families. It's more vital than ever that Glasgow maintains a global outlook. Glaswegians embrace internationalism, and we are now introducing new ways of working with other cities across Europe and across the rest of the world. Our commitment to link more effectively with other innovative cities across Europe has resulted in Glasgow leading on the development of the Ideas and Knowledge Exchange Network, uh, which is fabulously known as ICEN. Um, and I'm not sure that our partner cities in Barcelona, Amsterdam, Paris and Athens would necessarily get that gag, but we in Glasgow um, know that ICEN has a double meaning. Um, but that platform connects Europe's leading cit cities of innovation to develop fresh ideas um, and Glasgow is recognised as one of Europe's leading cities of innovation within that network. We are also working on signing partnerships with eight European cities in advance of Brexit. Those partnerships will be nimble, they will outline the steadfast commitment this city has to being outward looking and they will share best practice to solve the challenges that cities collectively face in Europe and indeed globally. And we're identifying a list of global Glasgow ambassadors to sell the city to the world. Expats, also high profile and mobile Glaswegians, or those with a deep affinity with our city, who we can call upon to fight our, our corner and promote Glasgow and its strengths. And seeing as how I have a captive audience here right now, we are more than open to volunteers. Please do get in touch. So, that's a bit of a summary of what we've done over the past year, um, where we are now, where we're heading uh, in the months to come. What else do we do over the next year? Where is our focus going to lie? The City Council has our targets. We aim to create 3,500 jobs in the city from inward investment, 1,000 more than we created this year, and that's not including the Barclays investment, of which I will say more shortly. We will increase our digital connectivity by considerable steps to become one of the best connected cities in Europe. And we will redouble our efforts to increase the business base by another 500 businesses by this time next year. We have our connectivity commission to start implementing and we will get going immediately where current resources allow and where there's the most a clear alignment with our ongoing activity, such as the Avenues project. Professor Clark's report and his next piece of work gives us an even stronger understanding of the strategies that we need to face our challenges now in the future. So these and our other priorities will be the building blocks that will go towards positioning Glasgow as what Professor Clark calls a new world city, matching or exceeding the reach and reputations of our global peer cities, such as Bilbao, Rotterdam, Gothenburg, Pittsburgh, Adelaide, and driving forward that fourth economic cycle of competitiveness, innovation and growth, building on the progress that we've made over the past 30 years. For Glasgow, we have a platform to do that, and it's to exploit our unique placing in the space where innovation, culture and quality of life intersect to create something that is distinctively Glaswegian. That's our target for the next five years. And in the more immediate term, even more immediate term, our ambitions are to build on the investments that the city government has made in the council's key economic functions to position Glasgow as the best city in the UK in which to invest and do business. 
We will cement our position as a leader for smart cities, business innovation and higher education. We will make sure that we are development and investment ready. We will ensure our story of business and entrepreneurialism reaches the right targets and that our reputation for resilience, for partnership and collaboration and for delivery helps realise the potential of our city, its business and our people. One of the most challenging findings in Greg's report, challenging to our self-perception in Glasgow, is that Glasgow doesn't perform anywhere near as well as we should relative to those peer cities when it comes to jobs and inclusive growth. I spoke last year at the State of the City Economy about inclusive growth and in the past year the Council and the City Region Cabinet have put um, a great deal of time and thought into ensuring that our understanding of what inclusive growth looks like in practice has become ever clearer. We must make that our top priority. The announcement earlier this year by Barclays Investment to create 2,500 jobs in Tradeston is the first of many inward investments in which the city deal will be a critical factor. The Barclays deal is the most significant inward investment ever made in Glasgow and it is a beacon for what the public and private sector can achieve in close collaboration. The city has secured a commitment with for, that 42% of the jobs will be high value jobs and 341 posts are ring fenced for disadvantaged people entering the employment market or for people who have a disability and we know that those two sectors overlap to a very considerable extent and I have to say that our work and partnership with Scottish Enterprise on this was crucial. No matter how high profile or significant the inward investment, we will not shirk from insisting that the inclusive growth agenda must be a central consideration. And major investors like Barclays are taking on board our commitment to inclusive growth because they know that schemes like this are good for their own reputations, good for their ability to attract and retain talent and customers. And the Barclays example shows that when a city has a clear vision of what it wants to achieve for its places and its people, when it has the confidence to articulate that and to stand by that vision, investors will respond. They'll see the benefits to them of being part of something that's bigger than just their bottom line. And that's what will characterise Glasgow's approach to inclusive economic growth now and in the years to come. Not for us, allowing young people and families to be priced out of newly regenerated popular neighbourhoods. Not for us, a development gold rush diminishing the high quality standards that we expect in our new housing stock. Not for us, the high value jobs of the future being cut off to our young people entering the employment market directly from school or through the college route. We will be tireless in working to bring investment, new jobs and new homes to Glasgow, to innovate and create the industries of the future, to grow our population, our tax base and our city and regional economies, to become an exemplar new world city. But as we do so, we will keep a relentless focus on the motivation for all of that, to create a city that is more vibrant, more livable, more sustainable, healthier and more equitable. A city where the quality of life of every citizen is our abiding concern. That will be a challenge to us as a council, as a city government, and it will be our cha a challenge to our partners in the private sector and elsewhere. But it's a challenge we'll be proud to take on because that's how we'll build the future Glasgow that will work for all of us. Thank you very much for listening.